All right, welcome back to this week's edition of the Coach Mack Show, a post-homecoming show. Coach, big night last Friday night. It was. It was a big night, homecoming. We had a great week. Uh, the homecoming pep rally lasted nearly an hour. Yeah. Uh, all the kids had a lot of fun there. Uh, you know, during the week, like I think we talked about last week, I really don't get caught up in the distractions that I'm worried about our kids are going to have. I always tell our kids to really, you know, enjoy it because right. for our seniors, it was the last homecoming they're ever going to have and, uh, as far as in high school. So I, I wasn't worried about any distractions, and our kids came out and, and played real well the first half, and, and we hung a lot of points on them and, and early in the game and was able to get out of there with the win. Yeah, it was an awesome game. We talk about the, going back to the pep rally a little bit. Actually, that's the first one I've been to in 30 years. The kids were having a ball. They really do. They it's a lot ball. of people involved. Of course, like a, you come to our pep rallies, and you run to really realize how small of a school we are because you have the band and you have the football team on the floor and then you have the cheerleaders and, and uh, all that. With all that going on on the floor, mm -hmm. you have very little people sitting up top. So uh, <laughs> our school, the school's really not that big. Back when we had the junior high kids in our school, uh, we had a lot bigger pep rally, a lot more there. noise going on and everything. But still, a lot of, lot of enthusiasm uh, Friday yeah. afternoon in the pep rally. And we, I know the kids had a big time. And uh, it worked out really well. I told the kids during the week, I said, enjoy everything. Enjoy the talent show. Enjoy the... Um, everything going on, the pep rally, but once you step in the cafeteria for pregame meal, that's you got to get focused. you got to get down to uh, what, what we're really all about, and that's trying to win a football game. And well, they did a good job at that also. They did. I know uh, last week we talked about uh, the lack of performance from the offense, and this past Friday night was just, just the opposite. Yeah, we were able to go up and down the field pretty good. Uh, at the end, we got a chance to do a two-minute drill. We had less than two minutes on the clock. We had a lot of yardage to go, and, and we went down the field and scored with very little time left on the clock. So really pleased with that. Uh, so first half of the game went real well. Offense played well. Defense had a real lapse uh, only one time. Uh, I think it was early in the game. They drove the ball, scored, and then went for two and got that. But other than that, I think our defense played a pretty good job. It did a good sure. job in the first half. Uh, you know, and then once the first half was over, we had the homecoming stuff and all that kind of business yeah. on the field. And uh, Jamez Davis, Mr. CCHS, my center, and I had to be out there during uh, halftime, but they made it in just at the end of halftime. Came out the second half, and, uh, you know, second half, we kind of did what we wanted to do was just get the game over with. We're up 38-8, to eight, right. but we've always had a philosophy or always had a, a belief in no matter what the score is, start the second half with your starters give them one series and that's not just me that's I don't know a coach that doesn't doesn't do that uh, every coach I know and every coach I've ever talked to says regardless of uh, how big you're up you always go out the second half with your starters you know for one series on each side of the ball maybe more and depend on uh, how everything's going then you then you get them off you don't want to get them off too early because People have watched football enough, oh, yeah. have seen comebacks. You don't want to go out there with your young guys and then get them steamrolling from the beginning, and all of a sudden, shift. all of a sudden, you're in the fourth quarter and you have a whole new football game. So, you know, going out the second half, our defense really didn't play as well as I'd hoped. We we gave up some yards, we kept them out of the end zone, but again, we we suffered a big loss, a huge loss, really just really heartbreaking for me. Uh, um, you know, number 43, Drake Gillis, uh, right. you know, really a, one of our finest team leaders we have. I, if not the best team leader, broke his lower leg. Um, it's just one of those things where a uh, guy just went and hit him a little low and, and uh, could have happened in the first quarter, second quarter. It just happened to happen in the first series of the, of the third quarter. He ran off the field on his own power. The trainer was that. looking at him. And I thought maybe he sprained his ankle or something, so I wasn't terribly concerned at that point. And the trainer came up over my shoulder and said he broke his leg, and uh, and I really just I really my heart it just crushed me uh, knowing yeah. that that Drake most likely won't play college football, and uh, this is his this is his final season, this is right. his team, and for this to happen, it's really unfortunate. It's one of the worst things a coach has to go through is to see one of his kids get hurt. Right. And uh, so right now that leaves us with two of our best linebackers out for the year. Right. Uh, Terry Wilson, number 11, who went out before we even started playing uh, in camp. And then we have uh, Drake Gillis is now out. So we've, we've taken a real hit at the linebacker position. But even more importantly, we've taken a big hit with, uh, with team leadership. But, you know, him being hurt, uh, just like his dad told me, and his dad's a you know, great guy, and his dad told me that they talked about it, and his role just changed a little bit. He can still be that team leader. He can still... Uh, be that guy that uh, 
you know, brings us all that inspiration and enthusiasm uh, from where he's at, you know, on crutches, unfortunately. And then uh, the offense took over. We weren't in good field position, and, and uh, we had a late hit on our quarterback yeah. and uh, got hit in the knee. It's really questionable about his status right now. Um, I know he went to the doctor. I was with him today at the doctor. We really don't know uh, how this thing's going to end up. It could be one of those things where – He's out just this week, or he may be out in our next game. He may be out for the year. We really don't know. But right now, as a coaching staff, we're preparing for him not to be ready right. uh, for Clinch County. We're kind of moving on with that. Don't want to, but we have right. to. Uh, we have to really rely on the rest of our talent we have on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, it, it, you know, Losing Drake on defense was big, but losing your quarterback on offense is, is maybe even bigger uh, when it comes to trying to line up your offense or line up your defense. Uh, right. So, again, it was really, like you mentioned when you walked in, it was kind of an expensive win. It really yeah. was. And so, but we, we finished up the game, gave up no points. We scored no points. We had a running clock. Mm-hmm. Second half must have only took about a half an hour to get done, it seemed like. Uh, but we got out of there. I guess if you're going to have some problems, which you don't want to have, but if you're going to have some problems, right. I guess heading into open weeks when you want to have them. Uh, yeah. We were giving the kids some rest uh, today and tomorrow. I, uh, you know, the kids have been pushing in the weight room. They've been pushing hard at practice and in games, uh, really going hard. I, I felt like it was, um, I really just felt like it was to our best interest for our football team to give our kids a couple of days off, uh, let them uh, relax, get away from it. When they come to school Wednesday, uh, we're back into it full speed, uh, open week, and then getting ready for Clinch County. Really, uh, irregardless of what their record is, what our record is, or, or where you're standing, it's always the biggest game of the it's year. A, it's uh, a rivalry. Yeah, the Swamp War or the Swamp Battle, I've heard everything, but it's a, it's a war. It always is, and it's a tough game, and it's something we've got to prepare for, irregardless of who we have, whether, whether Trey's out or who we need to stick in that linebacker spot. We've got to be ready uh, to play our very best football against those guys. I know. Uh, can we, if you don't mind, can we go back to the defense just a little bit? The, uh, last week you spoke about the secondary stepping up. Mm-hmm. Leonard, they tried to throw a ball a little bit, but um, I thought the secondary stepped up at, like they, you called they, out. They, called uh, out. You know, again, they weren't a throwing team, and when they right. throw it, they don't throw it real well. Uh, you know, really, I'm still concerned with the secondary really? against a team that can really throw the football. Um, so we've got to improve there. I know Coach Woods and, and, and David Pender really working hard with that group. Again, we've been pleased with uh, Scott Birchall playing safety. It's just the corner positions we're really concerned about. Just, uh, right. just really the technique of, of coverage is, is what we're uh, struggling with. We, it almost looks like we're panicking at times. When the ball's in the air, we panic. We want to grab the receiver or we want to uh, – we, we, or whatever just looks bad sometimes <laughs> so we've got to improve there that's something we've got to really improve on now we've uh we felt good about our defensive front but now losing drake you know really changes everything we've got right. to uh, have somebody else step in and step up who that is right now um you know we're going to meet as a yeah. coaching staff uh, tomorrow we're going to meet probably for several hours just on that um that side of the ball right there figuring it's out who's like going to have to losing your quarterback on the defense exactly side. and that's exactly what it is i mean i told somebody it's like losing two quarterbacks we lost our quarterback on offense we lost our really our quarterback on defense our true middle linebacker drake gill is having a great year yeah uh way up there in tackles uh, and plays the position as well as i've had anybody play it in, in a while so losing him uh, is really is really tough uh, tough deal i hate it for him um i hate it for our team to lose a player like that yeah the um i know on uh on the offensive side of the ball You've mentioned to me in the past that you set up your offenses per personnel. Really, uh, so yeah, two things we do on, on defense. We set our defense up with our personnel. What gives us the best chance to get first downs? What gives right. us the best chance to be successful, keep the ball, and put it in the end zone? And, again, when we meet tomorrow uh, with the idea that we think that Trey's going to be out, right. we've got to redo everything. We've got to basically write down our best football players on the board and figure out you know, how can we put an offense together and utilize their talent. Right. Uh, and, and their abilities of, of as football players. So we've got a lot of work on our for us coaches here Thankfully next week. Uh, bye week. Uh, for, for the rest of the week. Yeah, if we had a game this Friday, I would be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm borderline panicking now, but I would yeah. just be a complete mess right now if I knew that we had to line up Friday without our quarterback. Right. And, uh, and, again, losing Drake on defense, what we're going to do to fill that position. But being we have an open week, uh, it's going to give us some chance to, for us the coaches to meet tomorrow. 
all day, and and then also uh, Wednesday we'll have a film session, and then we'll have a, a full practice. It's going to be a long day Wednesday. We're going to have our workout fourth block. We're going to do our film, and then we're going to go full pads, not necessarily a lot of hit, and just have everybody out there right. focused on uh, the things and the adjustments we have to make. All right. Well, Coach, we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back and talk about Clinch County. All right. The Folkestone Pharmacy, your original hometown pharmacy for over 45 years, is a proud sponsor of Charlton Sportsnet broadcasts. Folkestone Pharmacy accepts insurance from most local employers, including the City of Folkestone, Charlton County, Babcock & Wilcox, AJM, Charlton Memorial Hospital, and many others. The Folkestone Pharmacy wishes the Indians best of luck this season. Okefenokee Rural Electric Membership Corporation offers more than dependable electrical energy at a competitive price. Quality service is provided by a friendly and professional staff trained to meet your every electrical power need, whether residential, commercial, or industrial. If you have any questions or need information, call us at 1-800-262-5131. Okefenokee REMC, owned by those we serve. A proud sponsor of this year's Indian Football Broadcast. All right, welcome back to the Coach Mack Show. Probably the biggest rivalry high school in South Georgia. We're, we're headed over across the swamp to take on Clinch County. That's right, and I've seen it in uh, publications before where you have uh, Valdosta and Lowndes, right. and then along with that, maybe right after that, if not before that sometimes, is a Charlton Clinch game. Yeah. Uh, when I first came here as an assistant, we went over to Clinch. It was one of their state championship years, and, and I got to see them over there my very first year here, and I, I realized how talented they were and how good a football team that was. And then the following year, again, we got, we got beat by them as an assistant. Then my first year as head coach, you know, I told our players, I said, we definitely have someone on our schedule we need to strive to be as good at, maybe right. one day better than, and that's Clinch County. And I remember we lost uh, our first, uh, first time with them against them as head coach. We lost 13 to nothing, played great on defense, uh, right. but we just couldn't get the ball in the end zone. And uh, it was a tough game. And I think uh, it took us maybe a couple years to finally get over the hump. But once yeah. we got over the hump, we've had some great games against them, they, games that could have went either way. I know we've had a lot of success of late with them, but, uh, again, they're they're much improved. They had yeah. a year just like us. I believe they went five and six possibly, or or something along that lines. I know it wasn't a winning season. Right. Them and us both. I never thought you'd see a day where Charlton and Clinch both had losing seasons in yeah. the same year. But uh, and I know they're headed on the way up, and I know we've been headed on the way up out of that losing season. They have had some injuries early in the year. They have a um, they have a lot of skill in the backfield. They're oh. very fast, possibly the fastest team. Will face all year. Really? They have a, a particular player who's been out for a while, who is getting a lot of interest from uh, SEC schools, really? Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, people like that. I know are really interested in him, from what I understand. He's back uh, in the backfield. They run a little bit of a uh, hybrid wing T to a single wing type of mm -hmm. offense, where they're going to snap it in a shotgun position. But the quarterback, who is just as good as an athlete, is the two running backs next to him. Really? You don't know who's going to get the ball. You just got to really uh, take care of the box. You got to take care of the inside. Plus, you got to take care of the edge. Uh, very good on the sweeps, the buck sweeps, and so forth. And they're very good in the middle of the uh, the middle of the formation. So, our defense has got to really load up on them right there. I, they they do have the ability to throw the ball. When they do throw the ball, they're throwing it to a kid that can really run. Oh, yeah. So we've got to be aware of that uh, defensively. They have a defensive end. I, I he might have changed his number to number eight, but I think it was 82 last year. Uh, he's about six foot four, and he, without a doubt, is an SEC uh, player oh, yeah. uh, at defensive end. Um, so they've got a lot of talent. And again, last week uh, we thought Irwin County was untouchable. We thought yeah. Irwin County was going to run the table and possibly be playing for a state championship game, and they still may. But Clinch County beat them last Step week. Uh, they they beat them um, by I think a touchdown or so. Uh, so you got to really that really catches your attention. It and does. this week they roll into. Uh, they roll into Rochelle and play a an improved, obviously an improved Wilcox team who beat Turner last week. So <laughs> everybody who played uh, last week, the, the region really got mi uh, me uh, mixed up a little mixed bit. Um, and again, we have this week off. We can kind of see what happens. Hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm going to travel over to Rochelle to watch 
watch Clinch County play and get a little bit of feel, feel of them. And uh, this week we're starting to collect film on them. Yeah. We do all of, our, all of our film work over the Internet, so that makes it uh, easy to get film on people. So we're going to start breaking them down. Uh, to be honest with you, last week uh, we couldn't overlook Lanier, but I, right. I must admit uh, during last week I found time to look at film on uh, uh -oh. Clinch County. But it's, it's going to be a huge game. Uh, I have a lot of respect for, uh, for their coaching staff. Uh, th those guys, a lot of those guys are from from uh, Homerville, from Clinch County. Jim Dickerson, the head football coach, uh, does a great job with those guys. It's going to be a it's going to be a great football game. Yeah. A lot of intensity and a game that I know you go into can absolutely go either way. Yeah. Uh, it could be a tie game at the end. It could be a blowout at the end. You never know. Both teams uh, really get up for this thing. It's a huge atmosphere, like like over here. I mean, there's they're football fanatics. I've never exactly. been to Clinch uh, for a football it, game. It's I've always I've always game. heard uh, coaches talk about. You know, it's a big game when the corners are filled, and what that means is when you look up in the bleachers and you see both corners are filled up, mm -hmm. you know it's a big game. Uh, they filled up the and, and the corners probably will be filled uh, yeah. filled next week uh, or the week after this uh, over there in Homerville. That, the stands will be full. The, there'll be probably a standing room around the fence. It's one of those type of games to yeah. where. It's uh, it's one of the it's it's one of the most intense robberies probably uh, in the state I think. Yeah, I know uh, I know at work there's some people that work in my place of business where uh, they live over in Clinch. I'm sorry. Started talking the smack first thing yeah. this morning. So. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's already started. It really is. Uh, sometimes I talk like I don't like them and I don't respect them, but that's really completely the opposite. I have a lot of respect for them, mm -hmm. and I really like the coaches over there. And, uh, again, it's a real similar situation. It's a rural community. It's small yeah. towns uh, in southeast Georgia. They have a lot of pride in their uh, in their programs, their sports right. programs. So it's it's going to be a... It's going to be a lot of a, it's going to be an exciting atmosphere. It's one that uh, a lot of our kids, our younger kids, probably haven't seen before. So hopefully uh, we can rise to the occasion. Hopefully we get these injury situations worked out this week, and and come a week from Friday we're ready to we're ready to play. There you go. Well, now, uh, coach, we talked about you talked about what you expect out of them on offense. With basically anybody in the backfield is going to run the ball. Defensively, what are you looking at with Clinch coming at you? Well, I, I think what we're going to see is uh, depending. <laughs> A lot of it depends on what we do. I mean, uh, this the last two days talking to the coaches on the phone, we're going to meet tomorrow. I mean, anything's up for uh, discussion tomorrow with the coaches, from anything from the power eye to the wishbone to to uh, the wing tee. To, Which I, actually gives I, Clinch a headache. I, I hope so. hope so. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to do offensively yet, so I know they don't know what we're going to do offensively. We are going to, like I said, we're going to basically write on the, on the whiteboard. We're going to write every skilled player we have. Right. Our offensive line, the, the front five will stay intact, whether their hand will be on the ground or off the ground. I don't know yet. Right. Um, how we're going to look in the backfield, how we're going to look at, at receiver, uh, I don't know. It could be one of those situations where Wednesday we tell every receiver we got, you just became a running back. I don't know. Or, or one of those receivers may become a quarterback. Right. Uh, don't know yet. Uh, it's going to be uh, – it's, it's one of those things where – uh, like I told the coaches, that's why they call us coach. You know, we got to figure that stuff yeah, out. Figure and, the stuff out. And the people in the bleachers can evaluate and see how good a job we did. Well, you, you know they're they're doing that. Every oh yeah, game. I know that. <laughs> undefeated. Every, <laughs> undefeated. That's right. Yes, sir. Coach, um, wanted to congratulate you uh, at halftime, escorting your daughter again this year. Yeah. Yeah. Across the field. That's uh, you know, there's things with this year that have uh, been. Probably this has been the most special year I've had. A lot of these seniors I've known since they've been real little kids, you know, all through, yeah. you know, going to the kindergarten class with your daughter and, and seeing some of these kids uh, for all these years, seeing them actually grow up and, right. and knowing them since they've been little kids, seeing them around your house all the time uh, yeah. and, and everything. So, it, you know, homecoming was uh, extra special for me this year. The homecoming pep rally was uh, – Everything this year has been really more special than any year I've ever had, being that I've been able to go through all these things with my daughter. And uh, that's one thing I, I, I'm really so lucky about that so many parents don't get to experience day-to-day -day things with your kids. I mean, there's a long time that she would jump in the truck with me, and we I go to work, she goes to school, all at the same place. Yep. So uh, that's pretty special uh, pretty special for me, and uh, I'm really a fortunate person to get to go through that with her. Well, you got to do it twice last week. Yeah, you know, that's on right. On Maidenfield, senior night. Senior night on Maidenfield, yeah. senior night on our field, and then uh, – our um, homecoming uh, on our field, and uh, what in three weeks we have Telfair at home, which is senior night, right there again on the Do field with her. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just lucky people ain't yelling at me and everything. So I, I, that's a big thing. I, last year and this year for homecoming, I always wanted a big lead at halftime, yeah. so I didn't have to worry about things and I had to worry about people heckling me. So that's worked out pretty good the last two years. 
Uh, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. Well, Coach, uh, I think that'll do it. Um, we're going to take next week off, and then we'll be back. Uh, we'll see everybody. Big road trip. Need, uh, Charlton we need, County we need everybody to, over we to, need everybody to go to, over there to uh, Homerville, uh, and that's going to be a great atmosphere. You know, win or lose, it's really a special thing to be part of is that rivalry. Yeah. B team? B team this week. Uh, we got Ware County. I think it's going to be one of the other Ware County teams. I think it might actually be their ninth graders, thank goodness coming over so uh but again our b teamers have played hard last week university christian the game went to overtime that very exciting, exciting ball very game. exciting football game so this week we have uh Ware county at home i think it might be our last home b team game so we'd love to have a big crowd thursday at five o'clock speaking of that game last week if you don't mind me interrupting you just a second jernigan made an outstanding catch in the back of that end zone he he really uh he's gonna be a good football player he's a yeah. freshman yeah. He's a freshman. He's going to be a good football player. And with him, uh, some of the other ninth graders, and with that uh, junior high coming up, hopefully we're going to have some good football around here for a while to come. Oh, yeah. It's looking good. It's looking good. Well, I appreciate it, as Thank always, you. Coach. Thank you. We'll see you all Thursday live from where we're here with the Ware County game. And then uh, everybody make plans to travel over to Homerville next week.